Let's take a look at adding at the end of the linked list. So let's assume that we have a list. Here it is. Here's a list. We're going to start off with just a list with three nodes um, just because we want to add, we want to look at adding to the end, okay? <coughs> so how are we going to do this? How are we going to add to the end of the list? So we can only start at the head, remember? And we've got head.next, head.next.next, head.next.next.next. So we could, in this case, say head.next, dot next, dot next. is equal to node. But that's really not going to help you because you're going to have to have lots and lots of lines. Every time you want to add something to the list, you're going to have to add another next here. Okay, So that's not really a scalable solution. Don't do that. Instead, what we want to do is set a temporary pointer. And our temporary pointer is going to start off and it's going to point to head. So head points to here, A, B, C. And how do we know if this node has another node connected to it? Because it's not pointing to null. Let me re reverse that question. If this node is not pointing to anything, like C, then its next variable points to null. A dot next is not null. B dot next is not null. C dot next is null. So we start at the beginning of the list, and we go through and we say, is your dot next pointing to null? No. Is your dot next pointing to null? Is your dot next pointing to null? So we start at the beginning of the list with our temporary pointer, and we ask, is it pointing, is temp dot next, if it does not equal null, then we've got other nodes to go to. And so how do we get to the next node? We use, we set our temporary pointer equal to temp dot next. That breaks this link and moves it so that temporary pointer points here. Okay. So temporary pointer dot next is not null, so we want to do this in a while loop. So we break this link and we move temp to point here. At this point, temp dot next is null, and so now what we can do is take our new node that we've created. And we can say, instead of temp.next pointing to null, we want temp.next to point to our new node. So temp.next now points to D. So while temp.next does not equal null, we keep going through the list. When temp.next does point to null, we can just say temp.next is equal to our new node. If we have our add last method, we can define our temporary pointer like this, and then we can go through the list when we get to the end of our add last method, what happens to this temporary pointer? This is in our method. Let's assume we've got a method public void add last e object. So we, de we define a variable here, temp, which is a pointer to head. We go through while temp does not equal to null. We keep going through, and then we sent temp.next equal to node. 
when we get to the end of the method there, what happens to the variable TMP? It goes out of scope and gets garbage collected. But we've set TMP.next equal to node. So does that mean that node gets garbage collected too? No, because TMP.next is the same in this case as C.next. And there's something else that points to C. And there's something that points to B. And there's something that points to A. So it goes out of scope. Okay, now, what about our five boundary conditions? What happens when we have an empty list and head is equal to null? If we do this, the one line that I forgot, up a little bit. Here's our object that we've got passed. We create our new node. Okay. Now we set temp equal to head. So now we've got temp pointing here. And our next line is while temp.next does not equal null. What's going to happen when we say temp.next if temp is pointing to null? We're going to get an error, a runtime error, that is a null pointer exception. These are going to be your new best friend over the next couple of weeks. You're going to see lots of null pointer exceptions. What it means is that you've got something like this situation where temp is null and you're asking for the variable next associated with temp, but temp is null, so there is no next. Okay? So if you see a null pointer exception, it means that something is null and you're trying to access a variable associated with that object. So in this case, when we're adding to the end of the list and the list is empty, we have to make a special exception. Right? So when we're adding to the en end of the list, when the list is empty, we have to say, you know what, we can't do that. We have to basically treat it like we're doing an add first. So we want to check here if head is equal to null. You can check if current size is equal to zero. That may provide you with some extra problems if you haven't, for example, updated a, point, a current size counter at some point. If head is equal to null, is guaranteed to tell you the answer whether the list is empty. If head is equal to null, then we're going to make head point to our new node. We're going to increment our current size. And we're going to get out of there. Okay. So if we have an empty list, we set our head to point to our new node so that we don't do this null pointer exception business. We increment our current size, and we're done. We're just out of the method. If you've got a return, you don't need an else here because we're not going to do the rest. Once we get to return, we get out of this method. We don't carry on. That's one of those coding stylistic things that you need to pay attention to. If we're doing an ad like this, and I have three things in my list, like I say, how many things do I have to go through to find the right place to add my new node? I have to go through th three things. I have to start here. Temp is equal to head. 
and then say, while temp.next does not equal null, I have to go through my list. So if I have three things in my list, I do this loop. Sorry. If I have three things in my list, I do this loop three times. If I have 10 things in my list, I do it 10 times. If I have n things in my list, I do it n times. So what's the complexity of adding last like this? It's big O of n. Right? Because I have to start at the beginning and go through my list until I get to the last element and then add the thing on the end. So how can I get around that? So the suggestion is that I could use the current size. So how could I use the current size to find out how, where the last thing is? I need to get to this last thing because I need to set this next pointer in the last thing in the list to my new node. So what if I had a different pointer? So I've got head at this end. What if I have a different pointer that I call tail that I have at the other end of the list? And now, if I want to get to the last elements next, all I need to do is call tail.next. Okay. So an alternative way that I could write this code is public void add last E object. The, st the first line is going to be the same. It's written right there. I should be able to copy it. Node E node is new node E object. Okay. And in fact, this block is the same because if I have an empty list, head is null. If I have a tail pointer, tail is also null. What I need to do is the same as I've done here. I need to point head and tail to my new node. So I need to get rid of this null, point both of them to my new node. So I can do that in one line. If head is null, I can say head is equal to tail is equal to node. So I've got two equals assertions here. And basically, it's the same as writing that in two separate lines. I could say head is equal to node tail is equal to node, but I can concatenate that to one line, say head is equal to tail is equal to node. It does the same thing. I can increment my current size like I've done, and I can get out of there because I've done everything I need to do. So if we have things in our list, all we need to do is find our tail pointer and set its next to be our new node. Tail.next is equal to node. And then, of course, we've got our list. When we have our tail pointer, when we add something to the list, we now have to move our tail pointer over so that the next time we try and add something, it's in the right place. So tail is equal to node. We increment our size, and we're done. Very good point. So one of the things that you'll need to do for this 
is you need to have a globally scoped tail variable. So remember, right back at the beginning, when I talked about having a node class as an inner class inside our linked list, all of this, by the way, goes in linked list. When I talked about having an inner class inside of our, our linked list, I said that you have two or maybe three global variables. The two that I mentioned were head and current size, and the third is our tail pointer. So we need to have a globally scoped tail pointer that's of type node E, just like head. And when you initiate your linked list, tail is also going to point to null, just like head does. Of course, if you add a tail pointer, now th go back to thinking about our add first method. When we add first, we need to also make sure that we update our tail pointer if we have an empty list. Because if you're adding first to an empty list, you've got one element in the list. That's the first thing and the last thing. And the tail pointer needs to add to both. So the tail pointer is going to introduce some complexity into the assignment because you have to make sure that you update it in all of the add and remove methods. But it also makes the programming more efficient because we've got two different pieces of code here. This piece of code does not use a tail pointer, and the complexity is big O of n. This piece of code uses a, does use a tail pointer, and the complexity of adding to the end of a linked list is big O of 1, is constant time. We want fast, not slow. Okay. So for your linked list for the assignment, I want you to add a tail pointer, but that means you have to think about the add first method, and then when we talk about it next week, you, or in the next class, rather, you have to think about the add last, uh, sorry. When we think about it in the next class, you have to think about the remove first, remove last, and what happens with the tail pointer. Um, if you have a tail pointer, so here's our, our list, and our last one is null, and we have tail pointer here. Now, if we do remove last, if we do remove last, so we break this link right here, so this points to null. But if we forget to update our tail pointer, and now we do an add last on our tail pointer, but add, our add last method is correct, but our remove last method is not, now all of a sudden we've got two linked lists that are disjoint from each other. This is something that you're likely to run into during the assignment. So think about that and think about how you can test for that um, in the code. It's not trivial to test for that. It's an omission. It's not something that um, you've added that shouldn't be there. It's something that's um, missing.